Hey everybody, Tom here, and today I want to teach you how to make a tile box. So a tile box is a box that holds tiles. Isn't that amazing? Um, today I'm going to be using Karuba as an example of a tile box to be made. Um, but as of the moment, as, or as of the recording of this video, I have also designed tile boxes for Orleans and for Finca. So you may be here for any one of those reasons, or maybe there's a new game, uh, but they all share the exact same template. I just chose to uh, work with Karuba. But essentially, what we're gonna be making is a small box here that will fit inside of your board game box really easily. And when you open it up, oh my gosh, yes, when you open it up, uh, it's gonna hold all of the tiles needed for whatever the game is, just like that. And especially in the case of Karuba, it's gonna hold them in numerical order, so setup is a breeze. So this is gonna be what we are making here. Now, um, just a couple of links that I have in the description of this video. First of all, I have, well, primarily, um, I have created a website where all of my designs like this can kind of be accessed from one place. So I have that link in the description of this video. So maybe you're here for Karuba, but want to browse other games that I've made things like this for, go ahead and click on that link. It will take you to a place where you can browse the games. And um, I also have videos on how to make those different things as well. So yes, anyway, having said that, uh, what you're going to need to make this box is you're going to need to print um, on cardstock whatever the design is that you're trying to make um, and then you're going to uh, want some scissors and some tape for sure. Um, I have this nice paper cutter just for the very first initial cut around the uh, shape here. So with these deck boxes, most of my deck boxes are perfect rectangles, um, but I have added this shape on top. So just be aware that what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to go cut up the rectangles around this. I'm just going to be making the green one in this video, but um, there's a tripod right here and it's really hard to use the paper cutter with the tripod. So I'm going to be right back. If you need to go print and you want to cut out this basic shape, that's great. Um, I will see you back in just a second. All right, I am back, and you can see I have just cut out the big rectangle, and I hopefully I was clear enough before, but just in case, um, even though I'm making the one for Karuba, the template for the other designs is exactly the same, just different colors, so you should be able to follow along even if you're making different ones. But uh, first thing I need to do is, uh, the same thing I pointed out before, I really need to cut out these rectangles here. So with these boxes, I always find it easiest to first of all cut out the main shape, that's always step one. And step two is always to make all of the other normal cuts. Then we're gonna do all of the folds, and then we're gonna tape. So first things first, I need to cut out these worthless rectangles here. And don't have to be careful. Um, but while I'm going around with the, well here, I'll just get these rectangles first. But something I'm gonna point out is, to make this uh, more user friendly, what I've done is I've gone through and added dotted lines on all of the normal places that we need to cut. So uh, aside from just the outline that we that we do, I have put dotted lines on the main places that need a good cutting. So for example, right there's a dotted line, so I'm gonna go ahead and snip right there. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut right here. Now, I should also say, as we're going along, if this is your first time making this style of box, there's a good chance that it's not gonna turn out as nicely as you want to. Uh, I designed these, and it's taken me tons and tons of practice to first of all get the design right, but also to figure out the best way for myself to get things to look nice. So, if you mess up once, don't stress, it's just a piece of paper and some ink, so you can get that taken care of. Okay, next thing I wanna do is, there are gonna be two triangles with X's, those need to be removed. So go ahead and cut those out. And, like that. Oh, oh, yeah, there we go. Get this other triangle cut out here. Like this. Now there are two more triangles you have the option to cut out. Um, I used to cut these triangles out, like these used to have X's down here for my designs, um, but I have since learned a small trick and the reason why I keep those triangles right here. So these are folding lines more than cutting lines, but if you want to, there's gonna be an option to cut that off. 
Okay, so two more visible dotted lines, or two more pairs, I guess. So we've got these lines here and these lines here. So let's go ahead and cut those. And it's okay to not be perfect. I've tried to design these to be not perfectable. And next, cut on this dotted line here and cut on this dotted line here. Like that. Okay, now there are a couple more small cuts that are more like convenience cuts that we're gonna make um, that are not shown on here. So the first thing is, um, I call these the wings, these pieces right here. We're gonna be folding these and then kind of wrapping stuff around them. And so for me, what I like to do is just cut these kind of like at an angle like that, just so there's no overlap when we're actually folding stuff over them. So not a required thing. You might, you might not make this cut right now and wait to see what I'm talking about, but that's fine. Um, but for me, I know I've done this enough times that that's usually a helpful thing to make things fall into place a little bit nicer. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. The reason why I didn't put dotted lines there is all of my designs I just do on Microsoft Word. This is just made out of a table where I inserted colors and pictures. And it's you can make a dotted line there, but it gets a little bit weird. Like if you move something, lines jump out. It's a weird glitch kind of a thing. Okay, so we have those cut. One more cut that's gonna seem a little bit odd. Uh, and there's two different ways to do this. But basically, you're gonna wanna have a place to grab the tiles from. Now, for a while, the only thing that I did is I just cut a V in this shape right here, but I found that I liked the sturdiness of not having that be a V cut out necessarily, but by actually folding the shape down, it kind of adds this second layer of sturdiness and not cutness. And so that's how I'm gonna do my design, but I'll show you how you can just do a simple cut if you want to. Um, so there are gonna be two side patterns. This one that has the um, triangle and this one that doesn't. We're going to be looking at these ones. These are the ones where that the tiles are going to be held in place. And so one thing you could do is just kind of follow this shape here. You could just cut a triangle like that on both sides. Just cut a triangle if you want. But what I've found myself liking to do instead is just doing a single cut in the middle to the middle. So just a cut like that. Can you see it? I know it's a little tough to see. And then I'll do the same thing on this other side here. Like that. Okay. Next thing is, um, I like to do all of the cuts first, and then I like to do all of the folding next, and then I like to do all of the taping after that. So now we have all of the cuts done. What we need to do is start doing some folds. Pretty much all of these lines that you see left over are folding lines. And the best way for me to do this, and maybe it's because I've done it a lot, is I actually like to turn it over to the blank side, and the cuts kind of give you a natural guide for where all of your folds should be. And the reason why I like turning it upside down is as you bring things forward, you see the patterns, and a lot of times you might need to fold on a line, so as you're pulling this over, you can see the line where you should be doing your fold. And so it just looks, it's a little bit easier if you start blank side up. Anyway, so first folds I'm gonna make are these ones. I'm gonna just fold it over, and I'm gonna use either my fingernail, or sometimes if I'm feeling it, I'll just use the, the grip of the scissors to give that a good crease like that. Okay, let's go ahead and fold this side too. This is a symmetrical thing, so pretty much we're doing the same thing on both sides. Okay, next thing we need to fold are these wings that we kind of trimmed down a little bit. So I'm just gonna fold that over, and as I'm bringing it over, I'm just kind of looking for some color of some printing. I can just barely see it. I don't know if you can see it at all, but I can see it. So I'll go ahead and give that a crease. Okay, and again, it's just right there on the line. And we'll do that on this side too. There it is, just a little bit of color showing. So we'll go ahead and crease it. Then I'll get this side as well. Crease. And this side over here. Crease. Okay, so those are some folds there. Uh, next, really quickly before we go too far, I'm gonna take this cut. Again, this is like the invisible line one, and we're just gonna fold that triangle down like that. 
and fold that triangle down like that. Now I said I wasn't going to tape, but I have found myself often forgetting to tape these down as I'm doing my design. So just so I don't forget, I'm going to go ahead and tape it. The way I like to do this is take the rectangle and kind of line it up with, I'm going to use a fancy word, with the hypotenuse like that. And just tape it down like that. Okay. And again, that's mostly because a lot of times I find myself when I get into the taping, I forget to tape these parts down. And if you don't tape them down at the beginning, it just gets more obnoxious. So we'll just hurry and throw those tapes in there while I'm thinking about it. And we'll crease these over like that. And same thing. Grab some tape. Oh, I should probably talk about tape. Did you know the tape is complicated? It really is. And it took me buying lots of different tapes to figure out the kind of tape that I wanted and that I liked. So just a quick word on that really fast as we're going. So these were four different tapes that I went to the store to buy because I didn't know if I wanted invisible tape or transparent tape or what kind of tape that I would want. Turns out that invisible tape is not as invisible as the word would have you believe. And if you look at it, you can see it looks like a whitish color like that. And I don't know if the definition of transparent and invisible varies from brand to brand, but you don't want the pen and gear invisible tape for these projects. You don't want the duck invisible tape for these projects. It also has this white color as you look at it like that. Um, that's just going to show up when you tape things on the outside of these boxes, which is no good. Turns out that the word, at least as far as I could tell, that you want is transparent. So this is Scotch transparent. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's a it is a little bit like more see through y than the other one was, and or if you just are at the store, look for these single ones. Don't look for a big box. Look for a single one, because then you can look at it and see. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I want. It's very see through. So transparent tape, not invisible tape, as far as I can tell. All right, so we have those big folds done there. Let's see. This looks like an easy fold to make. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold on the bottom. And again, I'm kind of using the cuts. The reason why I like to cut cardstock first before folding it is because those cuts really help guide you to make good, healthy folds. Uh, before I forget them, let's go ahead and fold these parts too. Fold that triangle as well. And a lot of times I'll just pull it tight with one hand and then just crease it with my fingernail on the other hand and we'll get these ones down here as well now as I mentioned before it's possible that maybe you decided to cut out this triangle here I'm gonna fold it instead and again you're gonna see why in just a minute um, yes okay cool now before I forget let's fold that triangle like this Hopefully you can kind of see good enough what I'm doing. It's a little bit tricky to figure out how to film these. I've, I'm used to just filming a board game, but not crafts. Okay, let's see. Oh, come on. I want to make that as good of a triangle fold as I can. Like that. Okay, so I've got the outer folds done. Now what I need to do are all of these inner folds like this. And pretty much what I do with that is I just, same thing, I just keep it like this, white side up. And all of these cut marks are kind of my guides for where the folds are supposed to be. So I'm just going to bring that over. And there's one of my folds there. And then I just keep bringing it down. Or I guess over. There's another fold right there. And then maybe I'll turn it around. I've got this random top fold like this. Oh, there's one more cut that I forgot to make. Oh, I always do that. Sorry. Uh, this tab up here at the top, um, you don't have to make this cut, but I just have found it easier for things later on if you do. I'm just going to go ahead and trim that corner and trim that corner there. Okay. All right. Oh, I had one more fold to make. Where was it? Yes. So I did that fold there and then I need this one here like this okay so take a look this is kind of what your paper should look like even if the artwork is different but basically we're at the taping point now 
So the part where you cut out these, this is going to be the base of the box. Let's start here. And in fact, I'm going to start at the top of this and I'm just going to work my way down. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this over and we basically need to take these here and fold them inward like this. Okay, now I'm working around a tripod and it's a little hard to describe, but basically I'm trying to line those up so that these corners look good here. And I know eventually I'm going to put tape on these corners, so I might as well do it right now because that's kind of the, it's, it's easier to tape these corners and then tape on the inside than the other way around. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw some tape on that corner so that it doesn't move. Wrap the tape around here. I'll try to get it glaring so you can kind of see yep, that's where that tape ended up. But without the glare, you can hardly see it. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. Just want to line up that corner as nicely as possible. Like that. Like that. And like that. Okay, now remember how we kind of trimmed just a slight angle on those papers. The reason we did that is sometimes if you don't do that, it makes folding this flap over not so nice. But since we did do that little trim, and since we trimmed here and here, it's going to make it really easy to just fold that over, throw in one piece of tape in the middle so it's holding all three pieces together like that. Okay, hopefully you can see that okay. Sweet. Okay, so we've got that part of our box done. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to fold these two pieces together. And same kind of an idea. I'm going to bring the box over and I'm just trying to line up the pieces with the outside corners so the outside corners look as flush as possible. So throw on some tape there on the outside corner. And then that will help guide your inside. In fact, sometimes it's easier to just fold that thing down. But yeah, that's going to help guide your inside tape job a little bit if you will tape the outside first. It's a little counterintuitive for me. I used to just tape the inside first and then get the outside, but I was always disappointed by how it lined up on the outside. So we're just reversing that mindset. Okay, sorry. I, I have to bring it close because I'm looking at it up here. All right, so next thing is I'm going to just go ahead and fold that back so I can just do one piece of tape there to hold those all in place like like that. See it? Okay. Now we have the main part of the box. That's where the tiles are going to go. Last part is the lid, and I'm going to try to be as clear as I know how to be. So again, once upon a time I used to cut off this triangle here, and I would just fold this over and tape it. The problem is, I actually have an example. Hold on one second. The problem is when you do that, you're going to end up with, can you see it right there? You're going to a lot of times end up with some white showing. You could trim that back as you tape it, but what I've found to be kind of more fun and easier is I'm going to fold so we have the color and the white part. So we're going to fold that over and then wrap this around and it's going to hold everything super snugly and tightly and prettily. So I'm going to actually add a piece of tape before I do that wrap around. For me, I like to add tape like this. So looking at the bottom of the box, okay, whatever the, the box is there, I'm going to put some tape on the bottom of it. Ooh. Yeah, let's put some tape on the bottom like that. And I'll get the other side in a second. Now the reason I do that is, so this one goes in like this. Bring that side over, see what we're doing? And then as you fold this in, the tape is going to go pretty snugly into place like that. And it's taped down. If you're feeling it, you could add another piece of tape on the bottom, but I feel like that's probably good enough. Okay, so same thing. Looking at it, let's just put a piece of tape here at the bottom. And then we're going to kind of fold that together to make the lid, wrap that around, and because of how I place the tape, all I have to do is secure the tape into place. And we have just made a box that will hold those small tiles that we probably used to keep in a bag. In fact, for Karuba, having the tiles in order is so important. I used to, I would keep this in the bag and then I would rubber band it closed so that they wouldn't get out of order. 
But what I'm going to do is just as carefully as possible, of course, I'm going to mess this up on camera. Get excited. Oh, no, I got him. Yes. Okay. So for Karuba, you want these tiles to stay in order. You can just take those tiles. Magical moment. Let's see if this actually works. Come on. Yes. Yes. They're a little turned kind of crazy, but we're getting in there. Almost. Okay, hold on, hold on. I know I measured this to preciseness. This should be exact because I spent a lot of time getting it right. Got it? Yes. Oh, no. Come on. This is almost embarrassing. Could Part of that could be that I'm a fool. No, I've got it. Okay. You want it to be snug. I promise. It is snug. Snug as a bug in a rug. And then you can just go ahead and close the box. It'll be snug a couple of times that you do it. But what I usually like to do is get it all closed up with the tiles. And then I just kind of go through and I check my edges. It looks like there's an edge right here that could use some tape. So throw some tape on that part right there. I know it's not perfect that some white is showing. I might end up going to redo that or grab some marker. But for the most part, since this is a home do-it-yourself project, it's not going to be perfect, but man, it's going to be convenient. I tell you, like that, sure. Okay, it is just so nice to have these little boxes ready to go. They just fit in your box perfectly, and that makes me feel warm and happy. Hopefully, that was a fun enough project for you. Like I said before, there's a link in the description of this video for a web page that I just barely threw together that has access to all of my different kinds of tuck box designs and so please feel free to hop over there um it would make me feel warm and fuzzy if you would look at my tom teaches board games video channel on youtube and if you want to you can subscribe and stuff anyway that's what i had to show you about making tile boxes thanks for watching i will talk to you guys later goodbye